Mr. Algernon, I know you probably can't understand me now that I'm not speaking with my froggy voice, but I just want you to know I'm still here. And I haven't forgotten about you, and I will get you out of this pond if it's the last thing I do. Please give me a sign that you still recognize me. I know your memory's going, but please tell me that everything will be all right, and that there's still time to save you from being a frog forever. And that one day you will be a wizard again, and enjoy your favorite crumpets and tea. You know, you guys, I'm really worried about her. She seems obsessed with frogs. Hmm. Especially that one in the pond. She spent so much time down here, just chatting to it like this. It's as if being turned to a frog for a few hours has done something to her. What do you mean? I don't know. Changed her personality. It's not surprising, really, is it? It must have been awful for her, not knowing if she'd ever turn back. She needs some rest. Maybe we should try to suggest it. What are we going to do with Mildred and Ethel over this ridiculous feuding? I've given them both 500 lines, but it hardly seems adequate. Ethel should know better than to contravene the witch's code by changing one of her classmates into an amphibian. And no sooner does Mildred start on this special program of duties we've given her than she gets herself mixed up in something foolish like this. Can we open the mail before we deal with disciplinary matters? Finding a punishment for Ethel shouldn't be too hard, but shouldn't we be carrying out our threat to put Mildred back down to the first year? I've never seen so many letters. Where does it all come from? It's all junk mail and catalogues these days. We do need to discuss this, Miss Cackle. Look at this. Someone here is offering a witch exchange to Siberia. We'd host a visit from a group of Siberian witches and then take a party of our girls out there. I don't think so, Davina. I don't want to press the point, but I do have lessons to supervise. I realize that, Constance. Ah, Chief Wizard Hellyboy's reply. He's decided to accept my invitation to give the girls a lecture and says he'd be delighted to visit tomorrow night to give a master class to the girls in wizardry and wonder working. The girls would love that. Indeed they will. In fact, Constance, if you're looking for a punishment, it's just not fair, missing out on a Hellebore master class. Don't look at me like that, Ethel. It's not my fault. So whose is it then? Let's not get into that again. It's Miss Harbour and Miss Cackle who aren't allowing us to go. They've got long memories. What do you mean? Last year's Halloween celebration, when I crashed into Hellebore after you cast that spell on my broom. They won't want us going anywhere near him. You might as well accept it. It's all right for you. You couldn't care less about a Hellebore masterclass. But it's the first chance I've had to show a serious wizard all the spells I can do. And what makes you think I'm not interested in trying to impress Hellebore? Ha! The question is, Mildred, why would he be interested in you? What's the matter with her? Miss Harbour and Miss Cackle have just told us we can't go to Hellebore's masterclass. Punishment for the frog business. At least they're not putting you down a year, yet. Ethel's got no right to complain. Not after what she did to you, Millie. No, and if she thinks she needs a wizard more than I do, then... What do you mean? One way or another, I've got to see Hellebore. Why, Mill? Because he's the first wizard we've had at the school in ages, and only a wizard can change my frog back into Mr. Algernon. Listen, I don't suppose either of you would like to swap places, so I could go instead of you. Millie? No one would notice. Millie, you must be crazy. H.B. would slaughter us if we got caught. You've had a terrible shock. Don't you think a nice evening in bed would be good for you? Listen, I know you're convinced your frog's a wizard. He is! Oh, come on, Millie. A frog is a frog. I wasn't when I was one. <sighs> Look, if you're so concerned about me being there, then at least take Mr. Algernon in for me. What for? To ask Hellebore for help. Please? No. We can't, Millie. Oh, you don't understand. Millie? What's the matter with you? Millie?
What is it? What happened? There, look, on the bed. Ah! Oh, look at the size of it! That was in there, with me. What's going on? The usual childish hysterics, I expect. Come on. Well, I'm not touching that. Neither am I. Go and get help or something. Oh, what's all this noise about? Look! Oh, please. Is that all? I bet you you wouldn't pick it up. I would. I don't care. It's only a bug. There we are. Gotcha. <laughs> What's going on? Honestly, you're all pathetic. Look, he's more scared than you. That's it. Out you go. Go and play with your little beetle friends. <laughs> Now then, everyone. Our special guest tonight, His Honor Egbert Hellebor, has asked for an exceptional pupil to participate in his masterclass. Chief Wizard Hellebor will work intensively with the witch selected, refining and developing her skills in magic while the rest of the school watches. The Chief Wizard has indicated that his teaching will be pitched at advanced second year level. So it's logical that we should choose the most outstanding girl from this class. Normally speaking, the honour would have fallen to Ethel Haller. But uncharacteristically, along with Mildred, she has disgraced herself. In the absence of an obvious substitute, I have therefore decided to have a competition. You see the selection of toadstools I've arranged along here. When I call your name, you will turn one of them into a flower. The girl who ends up with the most impressive bloom will be the one chosen to be taught by Chief Wizard Hellebore. Right. Who shall we start with? Ruby Cherry Tree. Chrysanthemum. Maximum, Rubellum, Grandiflorum. <laughs> a good attempt, Ruby, if a little ostentatious. Moving swiftly on. That was great, Maud. You deserve it. Yeah, it was lovely. And not over the top like some people's efforts. I can't help it. HB had no choice. You had to win. What have I got myself in for, though? A class on my own with the Chief Wizard? In front of the whole school. You'll show yourself up for what you really are, Maud Moonshine. A second rater. Oh, forget about it, Ethel. It's not worth it. Listen to her. Sour grapes. Serves you right, Ethel Hallow. You shouldn't have used your magical talents on Mildred. Yes, you've got no one to blame but yourself. Where is Millie, anyway? Mr. Algernon, it's me, Mildred. There's no need to swim away. I've got something to tell you. Good news, there's a wizard coming to the castle tonight. Come on, Mr. Algernon. No, don't go away. I'm sorry, Mr. Algernon, but I'm only doing this for you. Keep still. We'll be there in a minute. Until tonight. You mustn't work. It'll be all right. I promise. Let's tie you up. He's here. Right. Is everyone ready? Remember, Chief Wizard Hellebore has not always seen Cackle's Academy at its best. It'd be nice for once to try and give him a good impression. Are the girls absolutely clear on what they have to do? They've been well primed, Miss Cackle. As soon as the bell sounds, they will come down from their rooms and queue up outside the great hall in orderly lines. Alert and eager, Miss Cackle. Good. And without Mildred Hubble to spoil things. Good evening, 
morning, ladies. What a pleasure it is to be back at Cackles. Are you sure that you're okay? I'll be fine. What about the what? Well, you know, the frog. Forget about it. You better go, you'll be late for hella boring. But Millie... Are you coming, you two? Go on. Oh, Maud. Good luck. Look, I'll see you later. Don't bother, I should probably be asleep. I'll see you in the morning, then. Yes, and you can tell me what a mess it's all been, and what a wreck Moonshine's made of it. All right. But just stop getting upset about it, okay? Oh, Drusilla! How lucky, just a person. What? There's something horrible under my bed. Could you help me? What do you mean, something horrible? A beetle, just like the one in Ruby's room. A horrid brown one with pincers. One run at my woods Look, oh, I gotta get down the Great Hall. Please, it'll only take a second. And you are the one that's good at these things. And you're the one who's meant to like animals. It's not an animal, it's a bug. Oh, what a joke. For goodness sake, anyone would think you've seen a scorpion or something. Come on! All right, where is it? Right underneath there. Oh, I can't see anything. Where? Try in the corner. Oh, there's nothing here. The other corner. Oh, I've looked there. Mildred! It may be too dark. Have another look, please. I can't see anything. Well, it was under there a minute ago. Oh. Oh, you're hopeless. Mildred, hey! I'm sorry, Drusilla. I really am. Get I'm sorry me. to do this. What do you mean? It won't be for long. Mildred? It's nothing personal, honestly. Get off me! It's all on a very good uh, cause. Uh, 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 uh. I'll explain everything later. I'm really sorry. I might be a pain, but I don't usually do this sort of thing. You know that, don't you? I hope you don't mind too awfully. I hate to have to say this, but there's no point in shouting, you know. No one can hear you. They're all down in the Great Hall. I'll be back as soon as I can to set you free. I will be back soon. No need to be nervous, Maud. It's a great honor to be chosen to work with Wizard Helen. Let us bring your hat here. Line up in silence, girls. Chief Wizard Helibor, may I introduce the bright pupil who is to take part in your master class? I'd be delighted. This is Maud Moonshine. A very able girl she is, too. Good evening, sir. I'm very glad to make your acquaintance, young lady. Five, six, seven, eight. Constance, we seem to have a second chair missing. Are you sure? Yes. We should have the whole class minus two plus Maud, which makes three. I know it's a bit confusing. I'll count again. One, two, three, four. Ladies, my subject tonight is restore suscitation, the art of transforming antique objects back to their former glorious state. For example, turning this broken old pot into the beautiful piece of pottery it once was. Or oh, this ancient moth-eaten cloth 
into the wonderful cloak it was originally made to be. Now you may say, how do I do that? That looks impossible. Surely you need years of experience to perform such spells. Well, tonight, with the help of my little friend here, Maud Moonshine, I intend to demonstrate that even youngsters like you can acquire the basic skills of Restore Suscitation, techniques indeed, which will enable you to bring great joy to the world. Uh, Maud, would you kindly step up to the rostrum? She's gone berserk, getting me here under false pretenses, tying me up, but going to Halibur's master class in my place, twittering on about beetles running up her leg, and she's like, huh. Oh, thanks. Honestly, Ethel, she's gone mad. Yes, but she's really done it this time, hasn't she? Think what Miss Cackle's going to say about this, and Miss Hardbroom. Come on. Where are we going? To the Great Hall, of course. What, in the middle of the master class? How best to catch her red-handed, right in the middle of whatever stupid thing she's planning to do. I better get my cloak on. I'll see you on the stairs in a couple of minutes. Remember what I said, Maud. Restore suscitation is not just a question of saying the right words or even making the right finger movements. You have to picture in your mind's eye the object as you think it used to be. What if you can't, Your Honor? I mean, I can't imagine what that thing used to look like. Just try, Maud. Try. Have confidence. Retractum. Adventurus. Adveniri. Historiamus. I'm sorry, sir. I just can't picture it in my head. Never mind, my dear. Try again. If you say so, Your Honor. Stop! Wait! I'm desperately sorry to interrupt your master class, Your Honor, Chief Wizard Hellebore, but there's been a terrible crime. What on earth is going on? Ethel Hallow, what is the meaning of this? There's been a kidnapping, and the kidnapper is here in this room. Kidnapping? What on earth are you talking about? It's true, Miss Cackle. It was Mildred Hubble. She tricked me and tied me up so she could come here in my place. And she's got something hidden under her cloak, Miss Cackle. All right, all right, that's enough now. If you are here, Mildred, I would suggest you stand at once and explain yourself. Your Honor, please forgive me. I'm probably the last person you want to see tonight, but there's an enchanted wizard in this box, and I promised him I would get him to you so that you could change him back, and I didn't know what else to do. What is all this nonsense about, young lady? Hmm? Are my eyes deceiving me? Or are you not the girl who ruined the Halloween celebrations last year? We do apologize most humbly, Your Honor. The girl was banned from coming here tonight. No, Miss Harbour. Please, Your Honor, Chief Wizard Hellebore, sir. It really is a wizard. His name is Algernon Webb something. Stony Webb or something like that. Only he can't quite remember. He's a frog now, you see, and he's been a frog for simply ages. Good gracious me. You don't mean Algernon Rowan Webb? Algernon Bro Who, sir? He was my roommate many years ago when this castle was used as a gathering place for wizards. He disappeared one day and we all thought he'd gone home, but unfortunately he was never seen again. <laughs> but all this was decades ago. He's in here, sir, I promise you. Please change him back. Ladies, please. Reversus, revolvus, returnus, resolvus, ilio, alio, transmutato, temporus! Algy, old chap. It is you, isn't it? 
not quite restore suscitation, but a similar kind of spell. It's Egbert, your old friend. Don't you remember? Egbert? Egbert? Of course I remember. But you were a lot younger then, of course. Oh, oh, excuse me a moment. I think I must sit down. Imogen, chair, quick. Oh, it's all a bit much. After all these years as a frog, my legs and arms feel awfully cramped. Oh. Egbert Hurlybore. Well, well, well. What a piece of luck. The luck came from your little friend here. This child braved all our displeasure to bring you back. Do you remember me, Mr. Rowan Webb, sir? We were frogs together. Remember you, Mildred, my dear. How could I forget you? No one ever had a truer friend. Without your help, I would have been a frog forever. And please, call me Algernon. Well, Miss Cackle, I think that's quite enough from me for one evening. And Miss Hardbroom, I don't think we can send this girl back to her room again. Not after this act of heroism, now can we? No, oh, whatever you wish, Your Honour. Certainly not, Your Honour. Is there anything you would like as a reward, my child? Well, yes, there is one thing. <laughs> is that all? <laughs> Oh, what a wonderful memory you have, my dear. Yes, that would be very nice. Very nice indeed. Mana tabularum panos crumpetarum. Oh, crumpets for tea. Just like the old days. Oh. I mustn't forget the honey. Uh, I see you haven't lost your touch, Algernon. <laughs> uh, would you care to join this young lady? And, of course, all of you. Hmm? <laughs>